Hello, and welcome once again to Time Between Times Storytelling. Thank you for joining me at the time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun is gone and the sky is grey. The time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows wafer, wafer thin. So thin that for just a few moments you can reach into their realm, and for a few moments they can reach into ours. The time between times, the time when people see ghosts, the time that people see lights in the sky time that people see fairies. The nights grow lighter, the days grow longer, the sun is starting to shine, the moon retreats to its home, and it reminds me of a time when the moon was no more, when the night was dark, and that shining bright light that brings hope to millions was gone, and this is its tale. There was a lady called Meyer who lived in the wilds of Wales. Near where she lived there was a swamp so dark you could hardly see your hand in front of your face. To step in it was almost certain death, for beyond the waters, under the Wadur, there were corpses, there were creatures, there was darkness uncounted. And Meyer and all who lived around it would steer clear of the swamp, for when darkness fell, Doom was certain. But one night, Myra was walking home after being to the market. She carried with her all the provisions for her family. But a storm had come in. The wind was wild. And Myra steered off the path. She first knew she was in trouble when her feet stepped into the swamp. And there she sunk to her knees. Before she knew it, it was better to go on than to go back. And all around at the periphery of her vision... She could see shapes moving in the darkness, hands grasping at her legs, figures moving just out of sight. She moved on and on, and the water went to her waist, to her chest, and eventually up to her chin. She had nowhere to go. She could feel hands grasping at her feet, pulling her down, down further she went, and panic rose in her heart. But she looked up and called to the moon that was bright in the sky. Help me, help me, please. And just then, a hand grasped at her and pulled her deep underwater. And she raised her hand high. And she felt a warm hand grasping her and pulling her from the water. As she emerged from the water, she saw that a glowing figure had grasped her, a glowing round figure. The moon itself had come from the sky and helped her from the swamp. It lifted her to her feet were clear and carried her back and placed her at the side of the swamp. The moon turned and looked at Maya, then slowly floated back across the swamp. But then disaster struck. For all those hands and creatures and corpses that lived in the fetid swamp reached out as one and grabbed the moon and pulled it under the water until the water was a complete glow. My looked on in horror as they brought a huge stone and covered the moon, leaving an island of rock in the middle of the swamp. The whole night went dark, so no one could see anything. Meyer managed to find her way home and rushed into a house and closed the door. She was thankful for the moon saving her, but knew she had brought a doom upon the night. And the weeks, the months, the years had passed. The nights were so dark that no one dared venture out of their house. For every time the doors were closed, the shuffling of dark creatures was heard outside. Every time the night did fall, the howls of doom were heard from the swamp. No one dared emerge from their house. No one dared go forth. And humans locked themselves in, leaving the darkness outside. Maya thought and felt that somewhere this was her fault and that she must rectify it. But every day when she dared, she went to the swamp and looked at the island of rock and knew that she could not carry it. So one day she called a meeting of all the village folk and they brought all their horses and all their oxen. 
and she asked them all to accompany her to the middle of the swamp, there to find a moon. They went to the swamp. They brought with them rope and tackle, and they tied everything they could to this great rock. And on Meyer's command, all the horses, all the oxen, all pulled as one, and the great stone lifted from the swamp. But as it did so, a bright light emerged from under the water, and the moon went back high into the sky to take its place amongst the stars. They let go and the rock fell with a splash, crushing many of the dark creatures underneath it. The villagers rejoiced as they returned home to their houses, knowing that now in the night there would be a slight glimmer of light, if anything. For the rest of the days, Maia would look and blow a kiss at the moon, for the moon had saved her, but she had also saved the moon. The sky with no moon is a dark place indeed. The night with no light is somewhere we cannot travel. But the moon was there to save her. She was there to save the moon. And that, my friends, is the tale for today. The tale of how the moon left the sky. But now it's there. Even though these days as the summer grows, the moon is less to be seen. When you do see it, be thankful for it. Perhaps wave or blow it a kiss. And remember my who was lost in the swamp. And the moon came to save her. Dear Chambaur for listening. Thank you very much everyone. I hope you're enjoying these tales. Please leave a like. Please subscribe. Please leave me a nice comment. And thank you once again for joining me at the time between times. The time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. And I hope for just a few moments in these times that have been very trying, that your time at the time between times has been relaxing. That your time at the time between times clears your mind and lets you at least drift free for a small period of time. For that is what we want. Diochen Bauer and Grandor. Thank you. My name is Owen Staten, and this is Time Between Times Storytelling. See you next week. Oi Bauer.